Right. And that's exactly the, the end result of this conversation, that Ghana. You see, because when I started this, and that's what you have said and Professor Balfour you have said as well, not seeking to attempt to rewrite our history while we are that, also think about the future ahead of us. As we have seen over the last couple of years, and now in into caught debating our history, which some have said is needless, and not even spending the same energies thinking about how, how the next 60 years of our lives will look like. And the concern that both Lawyer Digital Macro shares and, and Professor Bafa Jimendia about the kind of future our children will inherit, the kind of Ghana, looking at how things are going now. He believes that that should be the preoccupation beyond this. Because where are we? Look, 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 look at our state-owned enterprises. I don't know if you've seen the SO, state enterprises report. Over 50% of state-owned enterprises are running losses. We are still paying them. In fact, those that we are not able to pay, like, like the Produce Buying Company, PBC. You know, this week, the, the workers went on demonstration yeah. asking for 11 months of their salary. Not allowance, or salary. It's almost a year they have been working, they have not been paid. Now, that's, that's, that's where we are. So as we are caught up in, in this back and forth of, of how our history should be like <laughs> in recent time, how is the road ahead of us looking like? Hmm. Um, thank you very much, uh, Alfred. For me, um, this is a, a very sad moment for our nation, Ghana, that one of the major preoccupations of the president would be changing Founders Day to Founders Day. Founders with the apostrophe before the S. <laughs> and founders with the apostrophe after the S. Where we are grappling with such a terrible economic situation that we have never experienced in our history before. Not in colonial times, maybe except during wartime and not in our post-independence history. I am totally saddened that President Kufuado will preoccupy himself with such petty matters. I'm not saying that the issues regarding history and the accuracy and the facts of history ought not to be taken into account. But I'm asking myself, at this very point in time, is this one of the most important issues that the president should preoccupy himself with when your inflation has gone through the sky, when prices of basic food is beyond the reach of most Ghanaians, when businesses are collapsing because of exchange rate instability, when the whole environment, there is a lot of concern about even social justice, corruption of state institutions, and a whole governance system. And instead of the president focusing on those things, I am sad. But having said that, Alfred, let's get real. That is what I would start with. Let's get real about the issues. Mm -hmm. I heard a little bit about the submission of uh, my senior brother, Professor Jumendia. When we meet, we have our own kind <laughs> of conversation, agreements and disagreements. <laughs> we have them. And I listened to him about the failing democracy that we are experiencing today. And I don't have any doubt at all about that major point that he has made. It is very obvious that Ghana's democracy is failing. It's failing? Uh, it is failing. This democracy? Yes, it is failing. This type of democracy? It democracy. is failing. Let me, let, me, let me make the point. And mm -hmm. I'm taking a cue from some of the issues you raised that our democracy appears to be focusing on elections and electoral processes. Even that, people have concerns about its integrity. 
People have issues about transparency. People have issues about fairness of both the internal democracy of political parties and political organizations and national elections, even though we have made some progress. But having said that, I don't think that the problems we are having with governance now are because our laws and our institutions are so inadequate. I don't think so. There's a lot of improvement that we could make. Changes to the Constitution, for example, changes to laws regarding the running of uh, public affairs, where you have overlapping and conflicting institutions and organizations which need to be rationalized to make them more effective and efficient in terms of their delivery of outcomes for our development. All of those things, I think, require to be done. But as far as I'm concerned, and from the experience that we are all going through, the real issues are about the integrity of the leaders, the character of the leaders, the readiness of our leaders to have the political will to do the right things, even within the limited scope of whatever inadequate rules, constitutional provisions, institutional arrangements that we have, even within that context, if we have had leaders who would show a certain sense of integrity and a certain sense of justice and a certain sense of real commitment to the needs of the people, because after all, I don't think any of the societies around us, whether in Europe or Asia or in Africa, no society is a perfect situation. But how come with these same defective rules, laws, because I don't think the Constitution anywhere is perfect. How come? The values that have been espoused and demonstrated by the individual leaders, I think that is the biggest problem. Because really, if a president, and it's interesting, my, my, my brother here, lawyer, spoke about it, from one party comes and sees it fit not to touch First Republic Day, Republic Day, First July, not to touch it. Because this is something that nobody until a Kufuado had raised an issue. Nobody had contested it. And then another president from the same party comes. And now here we are, spending energy, precious time, not talking about producing more yams or rice or cassava, but talking about the president having changed First Republic, stepped its value down, and people begin to get concerned. So we now have to discuss all that. I think it is very, very unfortunate that President Akufuadu will lead this country in that direction. And it is very disappointing. How do we bring, bring finality to this matter? It doesn't. But you see, what I am saying is that... No, I mean, how do we what, bring finality to all of this? Because this you bring to parliament, finality to this when you elect it. leaders, individual. See, this is why this Alan Shemateng equation has become very, very critical for this country at this particular moment. And I'm happy. Professor Ajmadiya was very direct on this matter. And he's not the only one who is saying it. Anyone who will be honest, whether in MPP or NDC, CPP or non-partisan, anybody who will be honest will tell you that the change Ghana needs goes beyond MPP, NDC. And that indeed, as he said, he said, NDC taking over is not going to change much because Ghana is already overburdened with debt. The youth have become very despondent and are getting agitated. Now, let me tell you. I went to the University of Ghana Legon for a program about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And during the discussion, it was about national development by uh, KY Amako. Yes, that was, um, yeah. that was during the, the Ghana Economic right. the Pact. Right. I think I was, I was there to you. Yeah. I saw a minister of this government. I saw very senior members of the government and senior members of the MPP present. And a young man got up and mentioned his name and said, I am a final year student of law at this university. If by the end 
of this year, after we had the elections of December 7, if nothing changes, I will leave this country and I will never come back again. Mm. The room got quiet. After about 10 minutes, the minister left the place. Everybody's head dropped. And you could feel the weight of this young man's statement. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no. The change that people are looking for is not from MPP to NDC and MPP to NDC and MPP to NDC. The change Ghana needs is who is that leader? He may be from NDC, he may be from MPP, he may be from CPP, he may be non-partisan. Who is that leader who will emerge and send a signal of hope? so that it won't be an issue of political equalization between two parties who have basically taken this nation for a ransom and hold us, held us hostage for 32 years. You know, it gets to a point where you have to reevaluate whatever you are doing. People ask me, so you've become, you became general secretary of MPP. How come you left? And I say it's because of the same reason that people are asking for change. And that change, as long as I'm inside MPP, look, I don't even need to tell you this. The people who are hearing me, who are MPP, they know how much I had tried to fight for certain changes within MPP when I was general secretary, and it didn't work. I see. It didn't work. It didn't work. You tried In to fact, at one point, we we're going to have some constitutional amendments of the party, and we had all agreed on certain procedures according to even what the Electoral Commission follows and proper procedures of constitutional amendments, according to our constitution, we had a fight. And I had to go to trade fair with my private personal security because I was threatened within MPP. You went there with your private security? My private security. Otherwise, I couldn't have gone there and felt safe. Anybody challenging me, they should come. I'll give them further details. But you see, that is just a digression, just to give you a sense that... But I've look, had this question all the time when you come here, that we're well, okay. asking whether... In fact, some messages that came in earlier when you started speaking, yes. whether you were going to say these same words and take this same position if you were still a member of the MPP. Ah. You find it convenient saying these things because you... You see, these no people talk the out of ignorance. That is why, why I've dropped some of these things. Uh -huh. When some of us decide that, look, you let the party, let the party be. <laughs> let, you let the company, let the company be. But when people want to make such ignorant and in uninformed statements, then you need to educate them. People got physically assaulted because they had insisted that the proper procedures according to the MPP constitution must be followed. But since this is not a subject, can we drop that? Yes, indeed. Yes. You, you I just, just, uh, yes. Well, well, so it, anybody it, who keeps saying it. that, uh -huh. Let them be informed. They want to but, keep saying it, that's up to them. But if you say people were I physically have every assaulted, right. obviously people will ask questions. What do you mean by people were physically assaulted for trying to do the right uh, thing in oh, the MPP? People were physically assaulted at Trefe during, I don't want to mention names. Mm. The people who are listening to me, they know. If it is not true, and they challenge me, I'll mention some names. And some of them are in very high places in government today. So <laughs> it doesn't help. Let me tell you what. One day... I was on radio during the 2010 or so. No, no. When we're heading off for the 2016, during the 2014 MPP internal presidential primary, mm -hmm. I was campaigning for Alan Martin. And then I was on this radio station and said that there was a lot of intimidation by certain quarters within the party against whoever shows open support for Alan Martin. I said it on radio. It's unfortunate Dr. Makutufo is dead. But Dr. Makutufo phoned in into the radio station <laughs> and said, Ohinuto is a liar. He's just bluffing. Who is supporting Alain Chamati secretly and hasn't been able to show it publicly? There's nothing, no intimidation, nothing like that. Unfortunately for him, I had the voice recording <laughs> of a person very high in government today. He, he was not in government at the time. Saying that, you know, you see... We all support Alan. But if you don't know, go and show your face now. They'll destroy you in the party. So and so even called me, gave me the X amount of dollars. And I even said I didn't need it. So he said, look, so now me, the way it is, if you don't go and support this one and you show your face to support Alan, they'll destroy you. So I played the tape on air. The person left this country for almost one year 
He couldn't stay around. <laughs> so if they want me to mention them, you see, I don't just... Because he was impugning my integrity. Sure. But that's what I'm saying. Okay. People want to do that, that's up to them. Right. Uh -huh. But no. you see, where we are today, okay. Professor Jumundia is telling us, and I totally agree, if we didn't have an alternative, and we were stuck with the duopoly, that would be another matter. We have a person of such high integrity. Okay. And beyond that, let me tell you what. Mm -hmm. I carry this book with me since it was launched, The Great Transformational Plan by Alan Shamating. I was in Kumasi two days ago to have a chat with uh, General Agricultural Workers Union. Mm -hmm. They invited political leaders and parties to come and interact with them. Right. I told them, three months to election, MPP hasn't even brought out a manifesto, let alone a plan, because there's a huge difference between a manifesto and a plan. NDC hasn't brought out a manifesto, let alone a plan. The man who is prepared for the job and has brought out a complete plan showing how it ought to be done and how it's going to be done, people are saying, let's get stuck to the duopoly. So my point is, Ghanaians have a choice. If we really need that change, and changing from MPP to NDC, NDC to MPP, for me, that's cosmetic. It's just window dressing. Okay. You need a leader, not a party. He may come from a party, she may come from a party, okay. she may come from outside. A leader who has shown by character, by performance, by track record, that this leader can be trusted, this leader has the capacity, this leader has the will to okay. implement the things that he's talking about. If Alan says, look, you want to talk about agriculture, you want to talk about macroeconomy, you want to talk about roads, you want to talk about this, this is how. As we speak today, let me tell you, free SHS can collapse any moment. Because if you go and check government's wow. funding, from the first year, free SHS was funded 20% beyond budget, 120%. The next year, it dropped to 99% funding. The next year, it dropped to 76 budget. The next year, it dropped to 58. As we speak now, we don't even know 23, 24. Up to 21, 22. It is 51% funding. You can't go and borrow to fund free SHS. It is a good idea. It is collapsing. You need an economy not just growing 3%, 4%. That's why Alan Chamati is talking about oh, okay. you stabilize the economy, you let it grow, make it strong and prosperous. That, then you don't need to borrow. That, that, that is the kind of change that Ghana needs today. There's one thing I can promise you. that yes. um, In the coming weeks, I would spend time with you and, and all the other parties getting into your manifestos. Because Why, were you the waiting time, for them before no, you got into all, Alan's because plan? Every time when because you come it's been here, out for a while. If, we've, we've always had this discussion, isn't it? But every not, now and not, then you we, haven't we, really we, gone we, into we, the detail. We touch on, in fact, we had a whole conversation on GTP. With me? Uh, no, with okay, 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 all right. <laughs> okay, fine, so, that's so okay. But you, do, this you document agree? is something that should engage every Ghanaian. Okay. Tear it apart and then decide. 